A land surrounded by serene views, beautiful lakes, and mountains that touch the sky, where everything looks like something out of a fairy tale. Join me as I embark on a journey inside Switzerland. Talk about its history, geography, and people. The earliest known inhabitants of Switzerland arrived in the area around 400,000 years ago. But it was only 11,000 years ago that the presence of permanent settlements were found. By 800 BC, the area started being inhabited by the Celts in the west and the Raetians to the east. The Helvetii controlled much of the territories. After their defeat by Julius Caesar during the Gallic Wars between 58 and 50 BC, the latter annexed Helvetii territory for Rome. Are you familiar with Julius Caesar and his campaigns? If so, let me know in the comments. Over time, the Romans set up colonies all over the conquered territory, and the local population gradually adopted Roman customs. They were, however, frequently invaded by Germanic people to the north. The frequency of these invasions took a toll on the already dwindling Western Roman Empire, and it eventually collapsed. Most notable of these Germanic tribes were the Burgundians and Alemannians. During the 5th and 6th centuries, they came under control of Charlemagne and his Frankish Holy Roman Empire. The Alemanni, who were not Christianized yet, were in turn converted as opposed to their already Christian Burgundian brothers. The Franks integrated the territory of Switzerland to their burgeoning empire in the 6th century. But after the death of Charlemagne, the empire was divided between his sons. In the 11th century, a resurgent German Holy Roman Empire helped in uniting the disparate Swiss settlements and counties that were divided after Charlemagne's death. By 1300, there were already 200 towns in the territory of Switzerland. Most of these were founded by the main feudal dynasties in Switzerland. The Zaringen, Savoy, Kaiburg, and Habsburg dynasties with the Habsburgs becoming the dominating dynasty as time passed. Between the 14th and 15th centuries, the old Swiss Confederacy developed as a network of loose alliances of rural and urban communities. The Confederacy's process of expansion unfolded in different ways. Some territories joined the Confederacy voluntarily, becoming members with equal or lower standing while others were purchased or conquered. The eight cantons of the Confederacy, known as the Acht Orte, generally administered their own affairs. However, they did send delegates regularly to the Federal Diet to discuss issues of common concern. Swiss expansion in 1515 caught the attention of the European powers. Many of these towns were granted privileges by the non-Habsburgian Holy Roman Emperors which confirmed their status as imperial towns and free communities. In the beginning of the 15th century, the Confederation became a ruling power in the region, which was, for the most part, unusual for the time as the cantons did not act as a whole. Some Swiss soldiers were even hired as mercenaries by other European powers. Beginning in the 1500s, a set of reformations introduced by a certain Martin Luther would sweep the European Christian world. Switzerland at that time was also a bastion of the Reformation, with Huldrych Zwingli shaping Protestantism with his work in Zurich and John Calvin doing so in Geneva. There was a gradual but sure shift away from Catholicism in the Swiss cantons. This schism in the Christian world led to many divisions, wars, and other sorts of conflicts in the 17th century. With diplomacy and cunning, the Swiss cantons managed to stay away from such wars, most especially the Thirty Years' War. This type of diplomacy would shape the neutrality policy of Switzerland, of which it's notoriously known for. The 18th century was defined by peace in Switzerland, and the slow entry of industrialization in many European countries. After the French Revolution, democracy and liberty became the forefront calls all over Europe, 
changing the face of the continent forever. Equity suddenly became favored in the eyes of many of the Swiss. Napoleon invaded Switzerland in 1798 and replaced the old Swiss Confederacy with the Helvetic Republic, which was then again replaced by a federal state in 1803. After Napoleon's defeat, the majority of the European powers wanted a post-revolution status quo to be put in place all over the continent. But many of the population, already spurred on by the hope of liberalism and equality, combated these reversals. One such example was the Sonderbund War, where liberal cantons defeated the Catholic and conservative cantons, thus hammering the last nail in the coffin for the old guard. And on September 12, 1848, the modern federal state of Switzerland was founded. Switzerland's neutrality has helped it manage to avoid two world wars. It joined the League of Nations and eventually became a member of the United Nations on September 10, 2002. According to the World Bank, Switzerland has a GDP of $818 billion, making it the eighth richest country in Europe. It is famous all over the world for being a banking and financial hub and has a highly developed free market economy. It is the leading exporter of watches and clocks. Notable firms include Rolex, Patek Philippe, Swatch, and Richemont. Although not making up a large part of the GDP of Switzerland, agricultural products are still produced in the country. These include milk, sugar beet, wheat, potatoes, pork, barley, apples, maize, beef, and grapes. Switzerland has highly developed tourism infrastructure, especially in the mountainous regions and cities, making it a good market for tourism-related equipment and services. Have you ever toured around Switzerland? Let us know your experience in the comments below. Since the 14th century, the Swiss flag has been the insignia of Swiss soldiers. It goes back to the Battle of Laupen in 1339. To be able to identify each other on the battlefield, Swiss soldiers had sewn white crosses on their chainmail. Switzerland's flag is different from a lot of other flags because of its square shape. The reason for this is that the military coat of arms during the creation of it were square. The capital city of Switzerland is Bern. With a total land area of 1,800 square kilometers, or 700 square miles, Switzerland is one of the smaller countries in Europe. The country is most famous for its scenic mountain ranges, the Swiss Alps. However, another wonderful feature one can find in Switzerland is Lake Geneva, located in the southwest part of the country. Switzerland also has rolling plains and valleys in the middle of the country. Switzerland is bordered by Austria, France, Italy, Liechtenstein, and Germany. The highest point in Switzerland is located at Dufourspitze, which stands at around 4,600 meters or 15,000 feet above sea level, while the lowest point can be found in Lake Maggiore, 190 meters or 600 feet above sea level. The climate is moderate with no excessive heat, cold, or humidity. From July to August, the daytime temperature range is 18 degrees to 28 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And from January to February, the range is negative 2 degrees to 7 degrees Celsius or 28 degrees to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. In spring and autumn, the daytime temperature range is 8 degrees to 15 degrees Celsius or 46 degrees to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Switzerland has a total population of 8.7 million people. It is a multi-ethnic country, but the majority of the population are ethnic Swiss. They account for 69% of the total number of inhabitants. The country has a median age of 44 years old. The Swiss do not consider themselves a single ethnic group, but rather a confederacy. Their concept of nation is vastly different from others. 
Being a multi-ethnic group, Switzerland has many variations of European languages, but the most prominent is Swiss German, which is the official language of the country. Another official language of Switzerland is French. Switzerland is known throughout Europe for its cuisine. Let's get acquainted with some of these dishes. First, everyone knows cheese fondue. You see it everywhere, TV shows, cartoons, and some of us might have even grown up craving this dish just from watching it on TV. Made of melted cheese and complemented by bread cubes, this Swiss delight is a communal dish often enjoyed during winter months, bringing people together around the pot. Next is Rosti, a flat cake made of grated potatoes, either cooked jacket or raw, and fried in hot butter or fat. Originally a farmer's breakfast in the canton of Bern, Rosti is now enjoyed throughout Switzerland and can be served as a side dish or a main course. Switzerland is perhaps most famous for its chocolate industry. Swiss chocolate is renowned worldwide for its flavor and quality. Brands like Lindt, Cayale, and Toblerone are synonymous with Swiss chocolate, enjoyed by people all over the globe. Lastly, we have Papette Vaudois, a traditional dish from the canton of Vaud. It consists of a mash of leeks and potatoes stewed for hours, often served with Swiss sausage. This hearty dish is perfect for a satisfying lunch or dinner, especially during the colder months. Of course, Switzerland is also home to some famous people. Here are some of them. For the tennis fans, Roger Federer, the former professional tennis player is known worldwide for his skills and charisma. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who influenced Enlightenment-era philosophy significantly, was a Genevan. Next up, Carl Jung, who is known for his works on psychotherapy and psychology, was also Swiss. And lastly, Charles Ricketts, the British illustrator and author. He was born in Geneva, but was raised in France. If you enjoyed this video on Switzerland, you'll love this next one.